Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining our uh, webinar today all around uh, addressing the GDPR requirements, specifically with the Netrix Auditor. Um, I think this has been one of our most popular webinars that we've um, uh, put on this year. That we've had, um, I think we've actually hit the limits of the webinar system that we're utilizing. So um, it's obviously very, very popular. Um, there's certainly lots of talk at the moment around GDPR and uh, the requirements, and there are lots of people professing to be experts in the subject. I, I think we need to, to start by saying that certainly myself and, and Russell here aren't professing to be GDPR experts, but what we're hopefully going to do is uh, guide you a little bit through about what GDPR is, how it will affect you, but most importantly, the areas that Netrix that can help you and and what they are. Um, Russell, just a bit of a sound check. Can I, can I make sure that uh, you're there and say hello to everyone? Yep, yep. Uh, hi there, Barry. Uh, yep, I can hear you loud and clear. I uh, hope you can hear me um, perfectly okay as well. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Russell, what, what's your role um, at Netrix? Yeah, so my role uh, at Netrix is a pre-sales engineer. So um, I get involved with doing a, a lot of the uh, product demonstrations uh, when people are then you know, firstly uh, discovering our products to then um, assisting with any uh, technical installations as well uh, during any proof of concept process. Brilliant, fantastic. Um, so, so yeah, as, as I started off saying, um, uh, we're going to kind of have a look at GDR, GDPR as a whole and then look at some specific elements. I think there's a lot of um, FUD out there at the moment that uh, people are professing that they have a one-size-fits-all solution that will make you compliant to GDPR. Um, I don't think that's even a thing. It's all about uh, understanding and making sure you're moving in a direction to make sure that you are uh, certainly uh, more in tune with what GDPR um, talks about. Um, Russell, probably pass on to yourself then to start going through the presentation um, and any questions anyone's got, we've got a Q&A functionality. Um, I'm happy to make it as um, interactive as possible. Okay, uh, thanks a lot there, Barry. Uh, yeah, so uh, as uh, Barry just mentioned, yeah, if, if you do have any questions, you know, please feel free to put them into the Q&A window and you know, we will look to you know, answer these throughout the session or uh, yeah, again towards the end. Uh, so looking at the agenda, um, uh, just to go over a brief, um, just brief over the elements as to what we're going to be um, uh, talking about today. Um, so as you all know, you know, time does fly and, you know, come May next year, it, the general data protection regulation will eventually come into force. Um, and it's the most um, important change in data privacy regulation over the past 20 years, as it applies to all companies processing European citizens' uh, personal data. And it's truly the most wide-scaled IT security law we've ever met as well. So is your organization you know, prepared for it? Um, have you established all of the necessary uh, rules and procedures? So today I'm gonna to go, uh, go to share some of the practical tips with you, uh, which will then help you address the key GDPR requirements. So we're gonna be looking at uh, you know, what the GDPR is about, uh, the key GDPR principles, uh, the GDPR requirements uh, that we can assist you with, and how to address those GDPR provisions with Netrix Auditor as well. So, you know, why should you start now? Well, the GDPR represents a huge significant, uh, significant step um, in development of privacy as concept. So first, it is quite a wide ranging and, you know, will impact, impact every organization that processes any European citizen's personal data, regardless of where it's located. Secondly, uh, the GDPR penalties are extremely serious. So maximum fines for non-compliance are reaching up to 20 billion euros or 4% of your worldwide uh, turnover. A number specifically designed to you know, attract the attention of C-suite members as well. And thirdly, the GDPR raises the bar for compliance significantly. So it requires greater openness and transparency imposes tighter limits on the use of personal data, and it grants individuals more rights to stand their ground against organizations in case of data misuse. So meeting these requirements you know, will be a serious challenge for many organizations. The GDPR document itself consists of more than 200 pages uh, with over 99 articles containing technical and organizational requirements. So what does this mean? Well, some of those requirements are purely procedural, and it means you can meet them you know, by establishing the right organizational processes inside your company. As an example, um, you know, setting up physical security measures, uh, such as restrictions of staff access, 
door locks, signaling systems, and so on. In some cases, it's impossible to cope with our specific automated tools uh, when you have to show documented evidence of data processing or track any changes in huge informational storage. So we're talking about technical requirements of the GDPR. So we can't cover all of this enormous regulations uh, content, but I'm going to guide you through some essential articles today uh, so you have something to actually begin with. So you're gonna hear these words you know, uh, many times throughout. Um, uh, you know, so GDPR is gonna come up quite a lot. So let's take a look at you know, what they mean. Uh, so looking at things like the data controller. Uh, so this is the entity that determines the purpose, conditions, and means of personal data processing. The data processor is the entity that processes data on behalf of the data controller. Um, you know, for example, of what a data processor does, um, you know, a utilities company engages a company with, which operates you know, call centers to provide many of its customers um, you know, customer service functions on its behalf. The call center staff have access to those utility company customer records for the purpose of providing those services, but you know, may only use information uh, for specific purposes and in accordance with strict uh, contractual arrangements. Utilities company remains data controller, and the company that operates the call center is the data processor. Uh, you've also got personal data. Uh, this is any information related to a natural person or a data subject that can be used to directly or indirectly identify the person. So for example, um, a list of customer names and addresses will count as personal data, as may a database of customer email addresses. So today I'm going to focus on the next principles being the regulation base. Uh, these principles will be the core of your preparation. So the data security means protecting data from destructive forces and from unwanted actions of unauthorized users. So controllers are responsible for ensuring personal data is kept secure and protected against accidental loss or damage. This principle is the centerpiece of the law itself. Each and every article of the letter makes a reference to it in one way or another. The data accountability principle seeks to guarantee the enforcement of the data protection principles. So the controller must demonstrate all necessary controls are in place. You should be able to say you know, who's doing what and why and quickly get an overall picture of the current systems and processes state. A timely response is the ability to react quickly and even foresee things. So if a breach still occurs, controllers must, notif uh, must notify effective data subjects and supervisory authority of such breaches in a short period of time. And an audit trail is required for getting a comprehensive, accurate uh, documentation of your systems. So following this principle and storing all this information will enable you to reduce time spent searching for answers and give you a more holistic overview to the, you know, of the entire organization. Uh, also, don't look for a single solution to help you pass the GDPR checks. You know, it, it just simply doesn't exist out there. So st first of all, start building a holistic approach to your data security strategy. And Netrix Auditor is designed to help you uh, with the list of articles from chapters two and chapters four. So looking at things like uh, the process of the personal data, the responsibility of the controller, data protection by design, security processing, and also the notification of a personal data breach. So we're going to discuss them in a little bit more detail now, and then we can then see how Netrix Auditor can help uh, support you. So we're gonna, uh, I'm going to flip between uh, the, the chapters and um, jumping into Netrix and then show you a demonstration how we can help you with that particular area. So to begin with, uh, look at Article 5. So this contains principles relating to the, uh, the process and the personal data, which shall be processed lawfully and fairfully, uh, collected for explicit and legitimate purposes, uh, it needs to be kept up to date and so on. And its objective is quite clear. So at the end of the day, it's to protect personal data. So how can this be achieved? Uh, so first, you should gain control over the access rights um, assignment to know who, you know, who exactly has what um, to your data. Um, you know, using reports descriptions, you can then uh, set an appropriate schedule for review and reports 
They show all user accounts uh, with the current state of, of um, permissions granted to your files and folders. Uh, look at things like current group membership, excessive access permissions, and changes to, to our user permissions. Then you can then compare this data with historical states stored in previous snapshots within Netrix Auditor. So if I jump over to the uh, platform, uh, for those of you that might be new to Netrix Auditor, um, uh, recently we, uh, we launched 9.5 with uh, quite a few new enhancements, uh, like things like behavior anomalies. Um, just to give you a quick insight, uh, you've got your quick start where you can then start creating monitoring plans, or you could jump straight into the configuration as well. So here's where you're then specifying all the environments, uh, all the aspects of your inf infrastructure that you want to audit. Uh, I know once that data is being collected under the intelligence is where you can then uh, look to interrogate all that data. Uh, just before I jump into any areas as to how we can help you with the process of personal data, if I just jump into the reports. So we do have a section under our uh, compliance. And we've also got a folder here for GDPR. And under this folder, we've grouped all of the reports in Netrix for ease of access. So you've got uh, them all in one place. And again, on the right side, you can then see the summary of how we can help you. Uh, again, you know, obviously we're looking at chapters two and chapters four, and then the uh, respective articles within those chapters. And if you click on the Read More link, this will then take you into a mapping document on our website. And within this mapping document, uh, what we've done is we've correlated all the reports in Netrix to a respective control. So again, you know, starting with Article 5 and Chapter F, uh, on the right side, you've got your process and report categories. So you can then set up subscriptions to things like your account management, looking at account states, group membership states, group membership changes, access control and data access, and so on. And then if you click on these links, it then takes you into the document. So you can then see those mappings. So here's my process. Uh, my report category for access control was data access. The report names in Netrix, and then what module that, that report belongs to. So here I can then see all of my data access reports. But if we jump back to Netrix Auditor itself, so looking at some of these reports around uh, that particular compliance, so here we can then look at things like um, account permissions uh, using our file servers stating times. So this is where we're then taking configuration snapshots of the, the access control lists uh, across all of your shares. So by default, the reports looks to see whether um, any groups like the everyone group or authenticated users is being used anywhere. Uh, we're also looking at share permissions as well as file permissions. Uh, so here I can then see my authenticated users is being used in my shared directory. Um, but then I can also then hone in other particular security group or maybe a user. So if I put in my user here, uh, rerun the report. Um, and, and again, you know, here I can then see the permissions that that individual person's got. Uh, so by default, I'm just reporting on the folders and I'm also hiding inherited objects. So I can then see the parent folder uh, and then any subfolders where the chain of inheritance is broken. The permissions that individual person's got. So is it full control, modifier, read only access? And how's he also been granted access into that particular location as well? So does he have explicit access or does he have access via group? I could also look to see for things like excessive access permissions uh, for this part of the, um, uh, the, the control. So here I can then verify you know, what kind of access a person has, maybe looking at a key sensitive location. So here if I look at my accounting directory, um, and by default I'm going to look at, yeah, I'm going to leave it at 30. So it's looking at activity over the last 30 days within this location. Um, so now I can then see you know, all of my inactive users, which have got access to my accounting folder and any subfolders as well. Uh, so the report is always going to return zero values. So I can then review those, those permissions and then verify, does an individual person need to have access uh, at that particular location? Uh, so you know, does this user have to have full control um, to my accounting guidelines folder if he does no activity here? If I wanted to also look at active users in this location, I can then look at the times accessed, rerun the reports, and then I would then see my active users within those locations as well. So I can then use this report for setting up um, the relevant permissions that a particular person may need. You can also then look at um, permission changes across your file shares. So we look at the um, activity, going into the permission changes report, 
Um, and then here I can then see what um, permissions are then changed across my files and folders. So again, you know, here's a modification of a folder, uh, what folders had its permissions changed, um, who done that change, when did that change happen, and obviously where it took place as well. And with the file servers, I can also see where that individual person was logged on to as well. And then what permissions have actually changed here. So I can then see an individual user has been granted all these permissions here. And then respectively, all the, uh, the files within that folder, which have also been affected. You can also then look at uh, an, an activity summary of all of your users. So using the activity report, um, in one simple uh, and easy, nice to read table format, I can then look at all the changes, reads, other attempts and deletions by my users. And again, I can also drill down into this activity to see what they've been um, accessing. So with that in mind, next you can then monitor what's going on in your entire um, IT environment. So you can then use collected audit trials uh, to review user access to sensitive content and data in SharePoint, Exchange, Exchange Online, uh, Windows-based file servers, uh, network attached, attached storage devices, uh, databases, and other IT systems. Um, again, you know, within the appropriate reports, you see all the data manipulations that occurred in your databases or file shares. So again, you know, here you can look at things like all file server changes by action. So in one report, I can look at everything added, removed, modified, renamed, or moved, and then see all those actions which are then taken place. Or maybe I just wanted to filter down to perhaps look at all my modifications. Or perhaps looking at things like across your structured data, um, across your Oracle databases or SQL databases. Uh, then looking at things like um, data deletions. So could anyone you know, be maliciously deleting data uh, from your SQL servers or um, Oracle databases? And you can also then um, you know, run similar reports for uh, you know, across your SharePoint, uh, SharePoint Online, uh, also looking at OneDrive for Business as well. Uh, as well as then taking those audit trials. Um, so to be more proactive and, you know, and react in a timely manner in detecting um, any user actions that violate your data protection policies, um, you, know, you can then think about con uh, or consider subscribing to reports like files and folders being deleted, uh, data deletions, files and folders moved, uh, renames and copies and such. So if I jump back over to these slides. So paragraph two of article five um, states that the controller shall be responsible for and demonstrate compliance with paragraph one, which is accountability. So how can you achieve this? So you can then demonstrate the effectiveness of your data protection controls uh, using the complete audit trail. That is um, consolidated and reliably uh, preserved by Netrix Auditor in a cost-effective two-tier storage. So we've got a file-based storage and also our SQL-based storage systems. And it's easy to access the archived data um, any time you know, that they're required for security assessments, investigations, and compliance processes. And it's also essential uh, reports and dashboards allow you to gain meaningful intelligence about user actions uh, compared to logs. So again, here, if I jump back to uh, Netrix Auditor, again, under the reports. So under the organizational level reports, we can then you know, obtain those audit trials by perhaps looking at um, all changes by a particular by a data source. So you can then see all that activity you know, in one report. So you know, by data source, all the changes here which are taking place in my Active Directory, you know, my file servers. Uh, I can then also continue scrolling through that activity. Quite a lot of data here. Yeah, it's just jumping a bit. And you know, here we're now looking at things like Windows servers as well. As well as then you know, maybe looking at all those changes by a particular server, perhaps. So again, creating those audit trials um, you know, and then having all that data in one place. So uh, looking at article 24, which is the responsibility of the controller, 
So the controller shall implement appropriate technical and organizational measures to ensure and demonstrate that processing is performed in accordance with this regulation. So those measures shall be reviewed and updated where necessary. So how can this be achieved with Netrix? So you, you can then uh, again review the required reports to gain relevant knowledge of the context around system configuration changes and data access that pose threats to personal data and then use those reports to get valuable details about existing uh, controls to then validate those controls and establish user accountability. Uh, so again, if we jump back to Netrix, uh, so here we can then, uh, look at reports around uh, things like file share changes. So under Windows Server, we can then look at those uh, configuration changes uh, where are you? Uh, file share changes. So I can see it then. Uh, so here we can then see, you know, any you know changes that are occurring to our shares on the file, across our file share servers. Again, you know, permissions being modified, new shares maybe being added, deleted. Um, also looking at things like um, uh, new with Netrix 9.5, we can also then take those state and time configuration snapshots. So you can also get a list of um, all your shares across all of your servers. So if we go into the Windows Server configuration details, or even look at the file shares on Windows servers. Uh, by server, you can then see all the shares which you've also got set up. Also look at the exchange as well. You can then look at um, yeah, perhaps a, a trial, looking back at all exchange configuration changes by object type. Yeah, so could anyone be you know, modifying databases, uh, perhaps delegating access to um, certain mailboxes? Uh, so he can then he can then also you know, track on activity. Uh, we've got some private mail about uh, databases changing, and also um, here we can then see changes to users as well. So we then see um, access being granted to someone else's mailbox. You can also then follow up with things like non-owner mailbox events, so you can then track the activity within those mailbox. Um, so in short, data protection by design is an approach to, um, to projects uh, that promotes uh, privacy and data protection compliance from the start. So it means that when you build uh, new IT systems for storing or accessing personal data, or use data for, for new purposes, uh, you should ensure privacy and data protection are key considerations um, in the early stages of any project um, and throughout its life cycle. So accordingly, paragraph one of this article de declares uh, the controller shall implement appropriate technical organizational measures during the, the demonstration of the processing means and during the processing itself. Uh, so how can this be achieved with Netrix Auditor? So to start, um, uh, you can then uh, look at reports to identify and evaluate the effectiveness of existing controls for protecting personal data. And then next, make the necessary changes to improve it. Uh, so we're reviewing summaries of IT changes and, and access events across critical IT systems and applications with who, what, where and when details, you can then guarantee continuous processing control, not only control at the design stage. Also reports uh, provide details on all installations and removals of software applications and hardware devices. Uh, a report exists showing the creation of potentially harmful files as well. So periodically review such reports. Um, you know, will keep you updated on the current state of your overall IT infrastructure. Uh, so here if I jump back to Netrix again. So here we can then look at things like, you know, configuration changes across our Windows servers. So again, obviously new to 9.5, you have those state and time snapshots where you can then get an, an overview of all of your servers. So here you can then uh, look at things like um, the current uh, OS version installed, uh, antivirus, all the local users and groups. You can also get a list of all the current software, as well as looking at shares. So here we can see all the software, which is then installed on a particular server. So here I'm just looking at one server here, uh, which is my database server. But you can also then monitor changes to software then being installed as well. So again, under the Windows Server changes, um, here we can then look for uh, programs being added and removed. 
So again, by server name, um, you know, what actions took place, you know, what's, what's software has been added, maybe, or, or removed. So here I can see I've installed Adobe Reader uh, to this server here. And again, I'll see who done that and when it occurred. Uh, maybe you want to look at uh, general um, computer settings being changed. So again, here you can then also track all that activity as well. Uh, so by servers, here I can see you know, you know, a bunch of um, uh, servers being stopped and started, uh, other configuration changes at the times. Um, here is a modification of the event logs, and I can also see the event logs being cleared as well. Um, also then using things like the interactive search engine to search through consolidated audit trials and then quickly find the exact information you need. So the, the interactive search engine enables you to easily, uh, to create easy to read custom reports with just a few clicks. Uh, also helping to simplify the investigations of um, security incidents or data breaches and helping you quickly understand you know, how those events happened. So you know, here we've gone into the interactive search engine. So I could either run a simple query using the who, the action, the what, the when and the where. I could also run an advanced mode as well. So maybe I wanted to find out uh, perhaps who's been accessing a sensitive folder or file maybe over the last uh, month. So for example, I can put in my data source, uh, which is my file servers. I can then run a search. It brings back all the activity that's happened here. Uh, I can then interact with these results to you know, build on that query. Uh, but so then perhaps I wanted to look at, uh, let me find it. There's one here. So if I just read some more details on this. Uh, so you don't want to look at my company secrets folder. So here I want to look at uh, the, uh, the what contains uh, company secrets. Again, run a search and now I can look at all the activity here. Um, yeah, again, yeah, perhaps, perhaps I wanted to look at, um, you know, activity over uh, a certain period. Uh, maybe I wanted to look at the last 30 days, or perhaps I wanted to set a, a custom date range as well. Uh, so here I can then track all that activity and all the attempts, um, you know, to, to access my company secrets folder. So here I can see a lot of failed attempts um, by individual users. Uh, you know, why are these people trying to access this folder at this particular location? Um, yeah, maybe I wanted to filter down to all the modifications which have been taken place as well. So again, you can see a bunch of permissions being changed on my folder level as well. Um, also drilling down and looking at a bit more activity on that. And then also from the interactive search engine, I can also then build a custom report here as well. Um, so maybe I don't want to look at the last 30 days. So then from the tools, I can then save this as a report. Um, and then get obviously given that particular report a name. And then that would have appear in the report section under the custom heading. So following on with this, uh, the controller shall implement appropriate technical and organizational measures uh, for ensuring that by default, only personal data uh, which are necessary for each specific purpose of the processing are processed. Uh, in particular, such measures shall ensure that uh, by default, personal, da uh, personal data are not made accessible to an indefinite number of natural persons. So how can this be achieved? Uh, so you must be sure that only authorized users have access to personal data. Uh, again, checking the reports, looking at um, permission states and group membership states. Uh, then subscribe to daily or weekly reports, showing changes to user permissions and group memberships to control privileged delegation. Uh, so again, if I jump back to the uh, Netflix Auditor platform. So here then looking at things like Active Directory. And looking at our state in time reporting that we take, you can then, for example, look at the effective group membership. Uh, so maybe you wanted to look at, you know, the particular access of a particular security group. So by default, this one goes in as domain admins. But here I can then look at a, any other security group in my environment. And then I can see the members which are then contained within that group. Um, also, it's given me the information as to whether they're an explicit member or maybe whether they've um, 
uh, been granted access for another group. So if, if I'm then used in things like group nestings. Uh, you can also then look at everyone's uh, group membership by looking at the user accounts group membership reports. So this will give me all of my users within my active directory. Um, and then I can then see all the security groups that that particular person is a member of. Now also being state in time, I could then you know, report in the past. So looking at the previous snapshot which I've got loaded, I can then verify back at that date, um, you know, who was a member, you know, who was all my users and what groups that they were a member of. And all of these state in time reports have that ability to look at the past snapshots. Um, also with regards to this particular control, I can also then verify things like group policy changes. So looking to see things like um, security settings being changed, um, account policies uh, being changed. So is anyone you know, potentially messing around with the security settings? Uh, so here I can see there was a modification to my default domain policy. Um, and then what um, action took place in that policy? So was something added to it, modified, deleted. But here I can see my minimum password length has been changed from four characters to seven characters. And also complexity has now been um, enabled. So you know, I'm quite happy with these changes. So uh, you know, previously they were quite weak and they're you know, a bit more secure. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can also then report on um, excessive permissions, uh, looking at things like failed activity trends, uh, newly created files that might uh, contain sensitive data, uh, which can help you spot uh, anomalous activity and also prevent data breaches or personal data misuse. So here we can then look at our user behavior and blind spot analysis reports. Uh, look at things like you know, perhaps the creations of files with um, sensitive data. Uh, so if we go into the information disclosure, um, yeah, so could anyone you know, potentially be creating files with uh, key sensitive names within the actual fi uh, file name? Uh, so here I can see I've created a file called passwords. Um, again, I'll see who created it and when it got created. And I can also then drill down and look at the actions which have then been performed on that file as well. So here I can then see that activity that which has then taken place in that file. So, you know, is anyone, you know, maybe creating files with keywords like password, social security, credit card, card holder, payment, payroll, and so on. Uh, also then looking at things like um, uh, failed attempts. Uh, so you, again, under the suspicious activity, you can then look for things like failed activity trends. So looking at like failed logons uh, across your active directory, failed attempts across your file servers, you know, SQL server, Oracle databases, and so on. Just drill back a little bit. I'm just going to adjust the threshold down to one failed attempt. So I get a nice trend chart as well. So I can then look at all the failed activity over a period of time. Um, how many attempts have then occurred on that day? Um, also then by drilling down into this activity. Um, so here I can see a couple of um, failed attempts by my SA account. If I drill down, you know, I can then look into those, you know, what those failed attempts were. So someone's obviously tried to log on to my SQL servers. Uh, you, we, you know, we also recommend reviewing reports that show enabled, disabled, expired, locked users, um, and then coordinate with your HR department regard, uh, regarding all user account statuses. So again, under the Active Directory reporting, um, looking at things like the state in time, yeah, you can then look for things like um, accounts which have expired. Uh, you can also then look for accounts uh, which are currently locked out on your Active Directory as well. Um, or under the, uh, the changes, um, here you can then see uh, those status changes of those accounts. So accounts which are being um, enabled, disabled, locked and unlocked as well. Uh, so looking at Article 32, uh, the security of processing, um, here we see that the controller and the processor shall implement measures to ensure a level of security appropriate to the risk, uh, including uh, the ability to ensure the ongoing confidentiality, integrity, availability, and resilience of processing systems and services, um, uh, the ability to restore uh, the availability and access to personal data in a timely manner, 
in the event of a physical or technical incident, uh, a process for regularly testing, assessing and evaluating the effectiveness of technical and organisational measures for ensuring the security of processing. Um, so how can we um, achieve this? Uh, so if I jump back to metrics again. So here we can use the uh, dashboard uh, overviews, which provide a high level uh, picture of what's happening in your IT infrastructure. So we looked at, at the uh, enterprise overview. Uh, so here I'm uh, looking over a particular time frame. Uh, so maybe I want to look back at the last week or month. Uh, perhaps I want to look back at a, a, a custom date range. I can then look at all of the, um, the activity in a nice dashboard environment. So I can then see all the changes by date, all of my service with the most changes, um, users that have made the most changes, and also changes by data source, as well as then being able to, to uh, drill down into this activity as well. So you know, maybe looking at uh, what's happened on a particular day, for example. So we then group all those, all those changes by data source. So well, yeah, um, here's a question here, Russell. Uh, yep in from uh, Emilio saying, can the tool look inside files stored in shared folders, tables of databases, or mailboxes searching for credit card numbers? Um, at present, um, we don't have uh, the ability to do data discovery. Um, it is um, on our roadmap, and it is something that we are, are certainly hoping to get in with the next release um, you know, before um, uh, GDPR uh, becomes enforced. Um, I don't have the ability to give an exact data to when that will be available in Netrix, but you know, you know, watch this space because it is coming. That's great, thank you. Um, so yeah, so uh, as well as the enterprise overviews, um, again, you've got uh, the all reports as well to look at all activity. So you know, looking at all activity by data source, by server, by user, as well as any API integrations which you might be doing, you know, pulling in uh, data from other sources. Uh, and then moreover, um, all of the predefined reports we've already shown you uh, can be helpful in getting a broad understanding of the context in which um, security incidents occurred, uh, you know, therefore finding the root cause of a problem um, and establishing user accountability. Also, Netrix, Netrix Auditor enables you to, do, to uh, quickly revert unauthorized uh, or accidental Active Directory changes to a previous state and also restore deleted objects where needed. Uh, without any domain controller downtime or having to restore from backup. So we do have an object restore wizard built into Netrix as well. So this is using our state and time technology to uh, restore in any uh, uh, deleted objects. So you can then look at a point uh, that you want to look back to. Um, here we're gonna be um, analyzing the state and time snapshots which are being taken. So we'll then look at all the changes which have then occurred. Uh, once the um, analysis is completed, uh, it's then going to present all the changes uh, within a nice tree format. So you can then review um, all the objects here. So for example, here I can see um, a, a user account got deleted. Perhaps this was accidental. Uh, if I select this user account, um, then this user would then be restored. Uh, so, uh, also here I can see that another user got modified. Um, I can then revert individual um, attributes. It will then show me what values would then be changed back. So for example, this particular user here, I can then simply restore this person. Continuing on with the restore process, and this user is now back in my Active Directory again. Russell, we've got another question now. Um, it's from Paul. He asks, if you wanted to use this on multiple AD domains or multiple sites, can all of this be linked back to a central dashboard, or would you need a separate instance for each domain? Uh, no, you can uh, run it from all one installation. Um, so if you're talking to multiple um, domains, uh, when you're setting up your your monitoring plan for that um, domain, uh, you would just need to ensure that you're using a data processing account which can then access uh, that particular environment. Um, so, uh, you know, for example, you, you're probably going to need to then use you know, the fully qualified domain name and then obviously making ensure that uh, Netrix is able to resolve the DNS to be able to talk to that domain. But yeah, it can all be run, run from one central location if you want to. Brilliant, that's great. And, and there's, also, there's no need to have a two-way trust between those domains as well.
So if we take a look, uh, continue with the security of processing. So the controller and processor shall take steps to ensure that any person with access to personal data uh, does not process them except on instruction from the controller, unless he or she is required to do so by union or member state law. Um, so, so here you can then look at things like um, you know, what's occurring outside business hours. Uh, so again, looking at the user behavior and blind spot reports. Oh, just suspicious activity here you can see what's occurring outside your your business hours so across all of your systems you're auditing uh, which you can then see here uh, it's going to look at the hours between 6 p.m and 8 a.m i can then drill back a bit so by user you know, i can then see the amount of actions that particular person has done um, and if i drill down into this activity so it's going to, again, you know, group it by data source, and I can look at what that individual person has then been doing. Uh, again, you know, also where have they been logging on to. Um, you can also then periodically review the access to things like archive data uh, to report or detect any suspicious high number of uh, file reads in your archive storage, um, you know, which might otherwise indicate malicious intent. So again, looking at data access, uh, you can then look at that access to archive data. And we also recommend setting up a separate monitoring plan, uh, which is then auditing your archive locations. Um, you can also then use uh, the video recording capabilities of Netrix Auditor to then capture the screen activity of privileged users in uh, critical IT systems and applications that not, yeah, might not necessarily produce any logs. So if we go to the Windows Server, you can use your activity. So here we can then physically um, look at the actions which are then taken place. Uh, again, you know, recording maybe key programs. Uh, so this is all recorded in one frame per second in grayscale. So, um, so the video file sizes are, you know, are quite manageable, very low. So you know, anywhere between a, a few kilobytes up to you know, a few megabytes, depending on how much activity has been recorded. Um, so in my environment here, I'm you know, recording my Exchange uh, server, and then only uh, initiating the recording when the Exchange Management Console is being uh, used. Uh, similarly, you know, my domain controller, I'm only activating it when things like my Active Directory users, computers, um, sites and services, DHCP, DNS, um, you know, key programs, which I want to record to you know, physically capture that activity. Um, you can also then roll it out to workstations as well if you wanted to record all the activity which is then you know, occurring on a particular workstation. Uh, so in case of a, uh, a personal data breach, uh, the controller shall without undue delay and where feasible, notify a supervisory authority of the personal data breach no later than 72 hours after the controller becomes aware of the breach. So to do so, uh, use pre-configured alerts uh, to uh, respond quickly to threat patterns that violate corporate security policies and indicate possible cybersecurity incidents, including a personal data breach. Uh, the notifi uh, notifications, um, which you can easily customize, are sent to uh, specified emails um, as the events occur, enabling you, know, enabling you to rapidly uh, react to a possible data breach and then pro you know, properly notify the authorities. So again, if I jump back to Netrix, we can show you the, uh, the real-time alerting. So the alert's got a bit of an upgrade in 9.5 as well. So there, there are a bunch of alerts uh, when you install the platform. Um, so alerts around you know, things like uh, changes to your most privileged groups in your Active Directory. So the filters are all pre-built for you. So if anyone's been added or removed from these groups, you can then receive um, an alert on that kind of activity. Uh, you may have noticed here under the alerts, we've also got risk scores as well. So you can then uh, flag a particular alert as a high risk or a low risk. Um, so as well as receiving that alert via an email, uh, you could, obviously you can opt to receive it by an email or a text message. If you don't want to receive a, um, an alert, or, or sorry, an email um, or a notification for that particular alert, if it's got a risk score enabled to it, uh, it will then become available under the user behavior anomalies. So here you can then, in a, in a nice um, timeline, look at all the alerts which have then been triggered by day. So again, you know, what's the risk, uh, the risk score on that day? And then below here, I can then see, you know, by user that's generated the most uh, uh, alerts on a particular, um, again, particular day or, or over a period of time. 
I could also adjust the timeline to then look at my top five um, individual people. Um, here I can then you know, go down and view their profiles. So if I look at this particular person here, um, here I can then look at all the alerts that particular person has, tri has um, triggered. So back on the 7th of November, I can see tampered with a password. Um, here is flagged um, a password that's never expired to a particular account. Um, it's also done some password resets. Um, here I can also see it's deleted an account as well. And you can also you know, look back at these activity records. So this will then open up the interactive search. Or maybe someone's, um, you know, you've got an alert maybe on a, a key sensitive location uh, and then someone's accessing that particular area. Um, or here I can see, you know, this particular person's done a, um, an excessive file modifications and excessive filed reads, uh, where it's triggered one of my threshold based alerts. Uh, so maybe here I wanted to look at all the activity associ um, associated with that person. So, you know, again, use the interactive search engine. I can then look at the, uh, the complete audit trail of that particular person. And you can also then you know, flag comments against these particular items. So you know, once I've investigated this, I can then flag this as reviewed and then give it a reason. And then that risk score for that particular person would then go down. Uh, also, all the reports in Netrics um, uh, you can also subscribe to. So if I just pick on uh, one of the reports here, so let's look at, for example, one of Active Directory, you know, perhaps admin group changes reports. So you may notice every single report has got the ability to subscribe as well. Uh, so here you can give your report subscriptions a name. Um, again, specify a delivery format for that report. Uh, perhaps you want to attach it to an email or upload it to a file share. Um, here you can then add in your recipients, uh, set a schedule. So if you wanted to generate that report daily, uh, maybe you wanted to generate it weekly or also monthly as well. Uh, so as well as all the predefined reports, um, anything you build using the interactive search engine as well, uh, you've also got the ability to subscribe to them as well. So again, for example, let me just do a quick query here. So look at my Active Directory. So from the tools menu, um, I've then got the ability to then subscribe to that particular search. Uh, it will then bring through those filters for me as well. Um, so you can then also find detailed information um, yeah, about which Netrix auditor reports can be used to address uh, the specific GDPR requirements in our mapping document, which I've shown you at the beginning. Um, I believe this is also available um, to download as well, um, if it is in the um, handout section, or you can also freely download it from our website as well. So that's to prepare for the GDPR, uh, an organization needs to undertake uh, you know, joint administrative, uh, technical and physical initiatives. Uh, so Netrix Auditor helps your organization um, across the globe achieve and demonstrate compliance uh, with the GDPR's key data protection provisions. Uh, so again, with Netrix Auditor, you get the visibility you need uh, for the controls, um, processes and practices to ensure they're aligned with uh, the regulations requirements. Um, so just briefing over a few slides about Netrix Auditor. Um, so it, it is a unified platform, helping you by giving that complete visibility and governance over your IT infrastructure. Uh, so we can then you know, easily access reports and provide you with all the who, what, where, when details. So you know, as you've seen today, we, we're providing that information to you in a human readable format, rather than having to trawl through uh, raw data within Microsoft. Um, also, Nexus Auditor will help you detect those anomalies in user behavior to help investigate with those threat patterns. Uh, so what are some of the benefits of Netrix Auditor? Uh, well, as far as what we do, you know, we're helping you to, to uh, detect uh, data security threats, who has access to what data, uh, what's going on within your infrastructure. Um, mainly, we, you know, we look at on-premise, uh, but we, you know, we have been pushing into the cloud. Um, and again, our clients and what our clients are looking for really dri does drive um, our development as well. Uh, as you see today, we've done a lot around the compliance side for your IT infrastructure. Uh, you know, so we've gone over some of the GDPR stuff, but we do also you know, assist with things like ISO 27001, SOX compliance, PCI compliance, and so on. Um, you know, we've got a lot of reports around those to help you keep track of what changes have been happening in your environment and you know, again, who has access to what data. 
looking at things like um, productivity downtime, uh, you know, who's made a change to group policy, you know, replications taking place, if things have gone terribly wrong, et cetera. So, you know, again, you've got that rollback in AD as well for then restoring um, objects as well. So, you know, we're, we're increasing the productivity of your own security teams. So they're then spending less time uh, doing investigations and then they can then get on with their day-to-day -day jobs. So as far as what we audit, um, you know, we look at your active directory, um, Azure AD. So if you've got a hybrid solution, you know, it's not a problem. We can look at AD on, in the cloud and on-premise. Same with Exchange. So we're doing Exchange on-premise and Office 365. Uh, look at your file servers, which also include EMC and NetApp filers. Uh, SharePoint on-prem, SharePoint and Office 365, which also uh, looks at OneDrive for business. Uh, structured data, we look at Oracle uh, SQL Server and look at those Windows Server configuration changes and also VMware configuration changes. So as well as 12 um, uh, main applications, you know, we do have our RESTful API. Uh, we've also got a bunch of free add-ons on our website as well, which will then integrate into Netrix. So then all just in things like Cisco ASA devices or anything running the Cisco IOS um, operating system. Uh, Linux-based uh, systems. Um, uh, we've got a good, we've got a, a new add-on for ServiceNow, so if you're use, using the ServiceNow um, application, to also integrate in with all the major SIEM solutions out there, like HP ArcSight, Splunk, LogRhythm, McAfee, and so on. Uh, who are our customers? Um, so this uh, represents just a handful, but we do cover quite a wide variety of business sectors um, and organisations from you know, financial to healthcare to governments. Um, and we do work you know, with customers with just a few hundred users, uh, a few hundred users um, all the way up to enterprise level with, you know, with, those, with um, tens of thousands of users as well in their environment. And there's some you know, good names there that we do work with as well. Um, a little bit about Netrix Corporation. Uh, so we were founded in 2006, so we are now um, uh, over 11 years old, and we have been growing from strength to strength. Uh, headquarters are based in Irvine, California, and we do have a uh, customer base of well over 8,000. Um, so this slide's a little bit out of date. Um, again, recognition, um, we're highly recognized uh, with you know, lots of the uh, uh, security platforms out there, um, you know, software vendors and so on. And we have, you know, won quite a few awards for our product over the years. Um, and, you know, this slide just represents, us, you know, some of those awards which we have won. Um, so looking at some of the next steps, uh, there is a link on our website uh, where you can then read more about GDPR uh, as well as uh, you know, obtaining the mapping documents. If you've liked what you've seen today, maybe you want to trial our products, uh, so you can then download a, you know, the software as a standalone install, uh, or maybe use the virtual appliance as well. Um, if you don't want to you know, install the software, certainly not a problem. Uh, we also provide a test drive environment where you can then get a feel for Netrix Auditor and the reporting capabilities without the need of having to install it within your own infrastructure. And we can also do a, uh, a further one-to-one -one, uh, product demo with you as well. So, you know, simply contact the sales team and they'll be happy to arrange that for you. Russell, got um, a, a few questions that are, mm -hmm. I've either have just come in or that I thought I'd leave until um, the end to, to mop them up. Yep. Um, so uh, the first one, could you expand a little bit on licensing? I won't ask you to get into the pounds and pence on, mm -hmm. on the call, but uh, how is it licensed? It's certainly one of the things that attracted me to, to Netrix. Now my customers kind of vary in size. It's got quite a, a flexible licensing model that allows it kind of quite an easy entry to businesses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so we license on the um, count of enabled users within your Active Directory. Uh, so that's looking at physical users, um, service accounts, and any functional accounts. So all the modules would be licensed that way. Um, also, um, when you install Netrix, you get uh, Netrix as a platform. So you get the full suite, uh, but then you only license the aspects that you're looking to take. So, you know, you don't have to take 12 modules. You could then start with just Active Directory if you wanted to. Um, later down the line, if you then want to start auditing your file servers, maybe Windows servers, simply obtaining another license key from us to then unlock those particular areas. But you don't have to install any additional software. But all the, all the modules are licensed on the number of enabled Active Directory users. Uh, and then the Office 365 is on a subscription-based to keep it in line with uh, Microsoft's pricing and Oracle is licensed by processor as well to keep it in line with um, Oracle's pricing model. 
Fantastic. And I think that's what really appeal, appealed to me is customers can kind of start at that low entry point, do an Active Directory, maybe a critical file server. And as they use the tool more, as they get used to it, they then expand it to other uh, solutions that are part of their infrastructure. Exactly. Yes, yes, certainly. Um, is there any issues with a servers uh, or desktops that are under uh, disk encryption or file encryption? Does it cause you any issues at all? Uh, that's a good question. Um... I don't think there is, but that's something I would certainly have to verify. It's, it's not one that I've come across before personally myself. I mean, it's certainly from my perspective, um, because it's running as an agent inside of it, disk level encryption really mm -hmm. wouldn't give it too much issue because it's running natively on the machine. It, exactly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because yeah, so, yeah, I mean, Netrix is a native platform as well. So we're using all the native logs uh, within Netrix, uh, within Windows. So, you know, we are talking to the security logs to pull that data. It, it would be uh, far level encryption, certainly, if you were trying to look inside any of the inside files. Inside the files, yeah, um, exactly. Would be a stumbling block. Um, have you got any integration with auditing of print management, uh, especially where maybe not the native print tools are being used, but maybe a third party managed print tool, or is that not really an area you get involved with? Um, it, it's not an area that we've really got involved with. Um, but then again, you know, using the RESTful API, you can integrate into other um, areas as well. Um, but again, you know, what our customers look for also drives our development. So if it's something that's not within the platform today, you know, we can then put that in as a feature request. Um, and then the more feature requests we get for a particular environment, uh, particular aspect, that then goes up the ladder on the development scale as well. So, you know, Fantastic. What, what you see in Netrix has all been driven by what our customers you know, have been asking for. Um, so there was a question around training. I suppose this is one of the, the areas where Computer World can add some value in terms of helping customers identify the best ways to use it and familiarization. But is there any formal training available for Netrix? What, what do most customers do? Um, for customers, no, there's not really any uh, formal training uh, for customers. Um, if, if you are a reseller, then we do have some kind of um, uh, training um, availability, but uh, you probably have to talk to um, uh, the more on the uh, the sales team on that side of it. Um, it's it's more out of my remit. I, I sort of I really can't like no, that's deal not with that I side heard. of it. But but, and, but and yeah, I mean I, I mean if if a customer um, has bought the products and is looking for some information around the solution, you know we we can uh, you know also have those one to one sessions where we can then give them a a bit of an, an insight into the products and you know you know holding their hands as, as as they're getting used to it and you know guide them along. But it, Netrix is is a very simple to use and intuitive program. It's very quick quick and easy to pick up. Definitely. And, and one of the things that I found that uh, upon seeing the product, I expected it A, to be very expensive and B, to be very complex to install and get to use. And I actually found the opposite, that actually it was a fair price. It was, a, it was affordable and you could kind of scale as your needs grew. Um, and second of all, it was actually very simple for me to install and get to use. So um, more than happy to have discussions with people if uh, you want to understand how to do your use cases and what training you think you'd need. It may be that one of the Computer World consultants can help you um, with that if you need to. So um, thank you ever so much, Russell, today for running uh, through that with us. It's been really great to have some interaction from the audience uh, and get asked those questions and also see some live product demonstration, not just kind of uh, the, the slides on GDPR. So thank you for that. Um, if you've watched uh, the presentation, would like any more information, uh, reach out to your Computer World Account Manager, or you can email me direct, Barry C, so that's B-A-R-R-Y-C, at computerworld.co.uk, and we're happy to engage with Netflix or do one-to-one -one demos, send you pricing, etc. So thanks once again, Russell. And uh, with that, we will uh, bring the uh, presentation to an end.